Good morning. Very warm welcome to all of you, and special welcome to any uh, visitors who may be uh, worshipping with us this morning. Uh, most of or all of the intimations are on the intimation sheet, or uh, those uh, who are uh, also important. Uh, our Facebook page and website is up to date, and please do take some time to check that too if you're unsure about any. Uh, intimation or anything that is happening in the church. So we strongly encourage you to, uh, those of you who are online, you do check that please. We are here to worship God and uh, this morning our call to worship is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 32 this morning and it is confession and forgiveness. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. Happy is the man whom the Lord does not accuse of doing wrong, and who is free from all deceit. When I did not confess my sins, I was worn out from crying all day long. Day and night you punished me, Lord. My strength was completely drained, as moisture is dried up by the summer heat. Then I confessed my sins to you. I did not conceal my wrongdoings. I decided to confess them to you, and you forgave all my sins. So all your loyal people should pray to you in times of need, when a great flood of trouble comes rushing in. It will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will save me from trouble. I sing aloud of your salvation because you protect me. The Lord says, I will teach you the way you should go. I will instruct you and advise you. Don't be stupid like a horse or a mule, which must be controlled with a bit and bridle to, to, to make it submit. The wicked will have to suffer, but those who trust in the Lord are protected by his constant love. You that are righteous, be glad and rejoice because of what the Lord has done. You that obey him, shout for joy. Let us bow our heads and pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are a God who is always there to receive us. When we come to you with joy, you share our joy. You rejoice with us. When we come with heavy heart, you take us, you listen what we have to say, and you do things in your own timing. How majestic and loving God we have, who never rejects us, who is always there to be with us. Lord, we thank you for this privilege, privilege of being in your presence week in, week out, to offer our worship to you. We open up on our, on our hearts and express our feelings to you. Lord, we thank you. And when we come to you and express our hearts and express confess our feelings and don't hide our wrongdoings, you are there to forgive us, just as your scriptures say. We thank you for this assurance this morning. And now we do just that. We confess our feelings. We confess that we have done wrong against you and against your people. And so, Lord, forgive us. We receive this pardon in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that you speak to us through your scriptures, through the preaching of your word, the words of the hymns that we are going to sing. And so, Lord, be with us as we continue to offer worship. 
For we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Let us uh, worship God and stand together if we can and sing Mission Praise number 445. Lord, the light of your love is shining. <coughs> Good morning. Well, a very depleted number this morning. Yeah. Well, I'll give you the microphone anyway. Yeah. How are you this morning? Many, I think, children are away um, from maybe coming back today, and we hope and pray that they enjoy wherever they are. Um, but this morning, how many languages in our congregation uh, that we can? speak or do, you know, other than English, yeah, anybody, you can speak French, yeah, oh yes, okay, well, German, anything else, I don't have <laughs> French and German, yes, Gaelic, anybody, sports language, no, French, oh yes, no? Well, there are some shy people, some. Yeah, well, okay, well, French, German, Spanish. Spanish? Who, who speaks Spanish? Understand? Oh, well, fantastic. So, four? Four? Urdu, yeah, Punjabi. I, I speak few. Okay. Uh, so, well, if I were to say, all of you are taking part in it, right? And there are microphones here. Can I get help from someone? Richard, can you please? Anybody? Yes. Uh, or, Joy, you don't to help. Okay. That's fine. Well, what I want to do is this morning, if we were to say, I love you, how would you say that? <laughs> well, that's okay. Well, that's fine. Okay. Can, so, can we say that? If. Libe. <laughs> Okay, well that's fine. How do you say in French or Spanish? Just hello. Alright, okay. I won't try that, I guess. Okay. Or Sp French? Anybody wants to say in French? That's a French, okay. You see? Yes. Italian, okay. Somebody wants to say in Italian, yeah? Okay. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Te amo. Okay. And Spanish. Somebody said Spanish. Yes? How did I do? Okay, that's fine. All right. Okay. Well, I thought somebody would say it's Scots language. Gaelic somebody. No? You might have to learn that. No? Okay. Well, any of you speak any other language? No? No? Language? French? Okay. French, okay. That's fine. Now, I think boys and girls and people think love doesn't require a language. It can be communicated in many different ways. Do you agree with that? Yeah? Do you agree with that? Now, that's the question then. How do you express love other than speaking? Kindness. Hmm? Kindness. Kindness, yes? Touch. Touch, okay, yes. Cuddle, yeah, that's touch too. Yes. Yes, uh huh. Cuddle, hug, same thing, I think, isn't it? Yes. Actions, that's right. You, sorry? Praying for them, yes. Thinking of people. And also doing something rather than, rather than just saying. Because it can be that, you know, saying is one thing, but practically doing something is quite another. And we know that, don't we? Yeah? 
very much so while Jesus had to experience similar thing now his friends disciples expressed their love for Jesus so much that they left home and went with him wherever he went he didn't have any house to stay in so they walked about in the mountains in the wilderness wherever and that was very good but there came a test of love at one point when jesus needed his friends uh, to to be with him alongside him and a in a very difficult time when he was facing the cross do you know what happened i'm sure you all know all of them just left him at a most difficult time now that betrayal i'm sure was very hard uh, for uh, jesus even but what happened after jesus rose again he came to his disciples uh, his friends he asked one thing to one person who claimed to die with him you know he he claimed to be with him no matter what and that was peter and jesus came to him and asked him three times the same thing can somebody remember yeah can you want to say it in the microphone yeah Yes, that's what Jesus said, do you love me? And if you do, then he said, feed my sheep, care for my sheep. The outward expression of love was to do something in action. Now that brought, you know, something uh, to Peter's mind and he was sad. But that's what sometimes happens, isn't it? When the reality hits, it's better to accept that and then move on that's what jesus was trying to do and so boys and girls and people if we have been claiming and trying to say something to someone then do something because that will practically show that what we say we mean it jesus said if you love one another by this people will know that you are my disciples you don't have to even say it but that doesn't mean we shouldn't say it we will talk about that later on but outward expression of love doing things in action will show that we are christians and we are jesus disciples and that is challenge for all of us not only for young people but all of us and i hope and pray that that we will work on because it only takes a spark that's why we're going to sing okay let's stand together and sing and now boys and girls as you go to your sunday school may the peace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the presence of the holy spirit be with you with your families with your teachers now and always amen The reading this morning comes from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verses 11 to 21, which is on the Pew Bible, uh, page 226 in the New Testament. We know what it means to fear the Lord. And so we try to persuade others. God knows us completely, and I hope that in your hearts you know me as well. We are not trying again to recommend ourselves to you. Rather, we are trying to give you a good reason to be proud of us, so that you will be able to answer those who boast about a man's appearance and not about his character. Are we really insane? <coughs> It is for God's sake. Or are we sane? Then it is for your sake. 
We are ruled by the love of Christ, now that we recognize that one man died for everyone, which means that all share in his death. He died for all, so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but only for him who died and was raised to live for their sake. No longer then do we judge anyone by human standards. Even if at one time we judged Christ according to human standards, we no longer do so. When anyone is joined to Christ, he is a new being. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is done by God, who through Christ changed us from enemies into his friends and gave us the task of making others his friends also. Our message is that God was making all mankind his friends through Christ. God did not keep us God did not keep an account of their sins, and he has given us the message which tells how he makes them his friends. Here we are then, speaking for Christ as though God himself were making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, let God change you from enemies into his friends. Christ was without sin, but for our sake God made him share our sin in order that in union with him we might share the righteousness of God. May God bless the reading of his word and help us to understand it. Once again, worship God, and uh, we uh, sing about His love, which is case number 449, uh, 49, Love Divine or Love's Self. Life is full of choices, and uh, we make these choices on a daily basis. We make the choice of turning TV on or not, getting up to do something or not. We go to shopping centers or supermarkets and we make choices out of 20 different coffees, which coffee should I choose? We make choices of why they're watching football or to do something more meaningful and I'm just saying it, you know? <laughs> You make choices to either go to church or do some gardening or whatever. Or we make choices when I see my neighbors to talk to him or her and find out what was going on life night while in their house. Or just, you know, turn your eyes and talk about weather, you know. That's God and we can talk about weather whatever, you know. But you see, our priorities shape how we make such choices. What is truly important uh, to us comes through what we do and we don't do, what we say or what we don't say. And it is motivations and, uh, you know, and heart desires that drive and define our priorities and in turn our decision makings. So these all things are related or interconnected. Now the passage that we heard this morning is one of the richest passages in all of scriptures, particularly, particularly with respect to what the gospel is and our responsibility to share it with others. This morning we're going to focus only on, on, you know, primarily on the parts of this text which deal with our responsibility to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. And so there are several things that I'm sure you must have noticed. And if you haven't, I'll just point out some of them. Uh, there are several motivational re uh, reasons 
as to why we need to or ought to share the gospel. And here goes the first one. In the very first verse, the 11, we read that Paul says, we know what it means to fear the Lord. And so we try to persuade others. Here's the first reason. For Paul, it is the fear of the Lord. Now, when we hear the word fear, we immediately, you know, associate with something that is, you know, coming on on us, judgment kind of thing. No, that is certainly part of what Paul is using here, fear. But it's, fear has another side to it, which is, I think, even more powerful. And that is reverence, respect. Once you come to know someone, who he is or she is, and you come to respect that person, then you don't do certain things even if that person is not going to judge you or bring punishment. You know what I mean? I don't do many things in front of my father, not because I'm afraid of the judgment or the punishment, but because I respect him and love him and respect his choices and his uh, his, his desires. And so when Paul uses here the word fear, he uses in both ways. He has come to know God in such a way that he has great reverence for him, respect for him. He has come to know his awesomeness. But he is also aware of the time of accountability when he stands before him. And he is asked about the responsibility he was given. So both aspects, Paul says, that is the reason for me to persuade others about the good news. The fear of the Lord, the accountability. Remember this all in the reality, in the light of the reality that we have to give an account to God for our lives. As to whether we were truly demonstrating our faith in day-to-day -day basis. Whether we were showing the faith that is in our hearts to those around us. You know, Paul, under the separation of the Holy Spirit, writes and speaks of his own experience. And so we have this passage which talks about the fundamentals, the overriding priority for every Christian and that is being an ambassador for Christ. Now we all know that what an ambassador, an ambassador represents. It is actually working on behalf of someone higher authority. And he represents him. So we as Christians as ambassadors, we represent God who Christ is. I usually say, people out there don't know who Christ is. We all, in our individual capacity and in congregational capacity, we are Christ for them. We are ambassadors. Every believer in Christ serves as an ambassador of Christ. For good or for ill. And so in verse 20 says that God makes his appeal through us. Through us believers. Be reconciled with God. No, Paul was aware. He was conscious of the presence of Jesus with him. He was living with reverent fear of God as I said. An awareness that motivated his actions, specifically with respect to sharing the good news. Now, same is true for us. 
Sharing our faith is not something we simply do because we must. It is something we do because we know the truth about eternity. You know, if we are truly Christ followers, if our hearts truly belong to Him, we will share the good news of what He has done for us because we cannot hold it back. You know, somebody has defined evangelism in a very simple term. He says, evangelism of sharing gospel mission is like some hungry beggar who finds a piece of bread or food and he tells others <coughs> where they can get it. That is mission. That is evangelism. And that is the job, the responsibility of the church. You know, somebody has said, church exists just as fire exists for burning. So if church doesn't do mission, it ceases to exist, whether we like it or not. Paul knows this reality and he is motivated by this. It is something which will come from our hearts. That's the first thing. The second thing, Paul says that the love of Christ controls him. He is controlled by the love of Christ. He is overwhelmed by that love and therefore he goes out to tell people that God has so much love for him. He loved him so much that he sent his only son come and die and forgive his sins. That is another motivation him, a motivation for him. And that ought to be a motivation for our mission too. Paul concludes that the, the Corinthians believers are not restricted by him, but in their own affections. You know, they have to come to know the love of Christ for themselves and if they know that how is it possible that they contain that good news to themselves church at Corinth thus knew about the sacrifice of Christ but the problem was it did not shape their lives they were aware of his death on their behalf but were not rightly moved to live on his behalf. We, God's people, today are prone to respond to Christ's sacrifice more like the Corinthians than like Paul. Paul says, God's love is such a compelling force in my life. It is so possesses me and directs me that you cannot help but share the good news. Does that love motivate us? If Jesus has given his life for you and me, his love ought to motivate us too to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And finally, Paul was motivated to be a faithful ambassador for Christ because this ministry came from God to him. Nobody has given him, no human being has given him that responsibility. The message that every believer is Christ's ambassador comes from God himself. So in a way, as I said earlier, we are representing Christ. We are his ambassador. It's his mission. It is our responsibility to show who He is, what He has done for us. The Bible says we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God is being rich in mercy and because of His great love in which He loved us and He sent His Son and He made Him sin for us 
estimation he has directly given us. The question is, why don't we do it? There are various reasons and I don't have time to you know, explore these reasons. We know them. I'll just point out. You know, one of the reasons that we don't do is this lack of confidence in our own conviction. Lack of confidence in our own, you know, relation to, to God himself, what he has done. Lack of confidence in the gospel. There is another fear. What will others think about me? Has we have gone crazy? Then there's a political correctness. We are, you know, so afraid of, you know, uh, annoying others perhaps or offending others. Why not be aware of the uniqueness of, of our faith? Because I hear this time and time again when I go visit people, oh, you know, all faiths are the same. I don't need to go to church. I'm okay. I'm Christian at home. The lack of understanding of the uniqueness of our faith that stops us sharing the good news. We don't know what we have got, how unique that message is. But perhaps we think it's someone else's job. It's not me, it's his or her job to, to share the gospel. You know, we think faith is something personal, it's you know, up to someone, it's not by bragging about your faith or sharing it, it's everybody's own decision. Yes, it is everybody's own decision. But we have given, been given the responsibility to share it. <coughs> Lack of motivation or training. All these things may be true, and yet the fact is, Paul says that it is our responsibility to share message that we have received. Where is the fear of God if we are so afraid of people? Are we only afraid of people and not God? Where is the knowledge of standing before Him, before His throne and giving an account of our responsibility? <coughs> Where is that love that brings us here but doesn't motivate us to share with others. And I hope and pray that these two, three things will reignite and recharge our batteries to see who we are in Christ and what He has done for us and how we need to share that with others. That's not about saying only. It's about doing things too. I come back to that. If you love one another, you will express and share that gospel. That's always needed in all of our churches. Because little things can ruin that. Watch out what we say. Watch out what we do, how we do it. Because church exists for mission. If it doesn't, it dies. And we don't want to see that. We want to grow, and we can grow only when we share that good news. Amen. Let us continue worshiping God. And we ask God to give kind of art that is expressed in our head mission. Place number 165. Give me a heart that would love the unlovely. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of your love, the form of Jesus Christ. And we thank you that he showed the full love that you have for us. 
and in response to that, Lord, we bring these offerings to you. In a very small way, we want to express our love for you. And we ask you to fill us, give us the kind of heart that would fearlessly share the love that you have shown us. And be with us as we go from here throughout the week. Give us opportunities to express your love with others. Bless these offerings and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let us conclude our worship this morning and we sing uh, this hymn which is uh, very well known to us. Make me a channel of your peace. And now go with peace in your hearts, that peace that is beyond all human understanding. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever.